music. I don't know if you guys can still hear that, but like very little. All right. What is going on, everybody? Happy Saturday. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Hope you guys had a great Friday. It is just laying down and we're back at it with another stream for you guys today. However, this isn't your normal stream where we're just playing some Smash Bros, playing some Fortnite, playing some Pokemon Crystal. We're not here for none of that today. Today is a unique stream for the day. There's something that, and you probably, if you've watched the stream in the past already, you guys know already what I'm gonna be talking about or seen my posts on Facebook, Instagram, or just word of mouth. You guys know that I'm gonna be talking about mental health today. Now, this is something completely new to me in terms of speaking out loud about it to the public. So just bear with me as I speak on that with you guys today. But I want this to pretty much be an engaging conversation with everybody. Um, you know what? Let's. Uh, I like this song better. So we're gonna we're gonna put this song for the. It's like two songs basically combined into one. But uh, yeah. So today we're gonna be talking about mental health, and it's something that's been pretty strong in my head for like the past few years, especially as someone who goes through it. A good amount so don't expect any games today we're gonna be talking about that serious topic and I take it very serious because not only does it affect me but it affects a lot of people out there in the world and like this channel is basically something I've made not just to like stream your newest Warzone and Fortnite games but to like actually get people involved and be the best version of themselves possible so that's what today's stream is going to be all about we're gonna spend like a good hour, hour 15 on this on this topic. And I want everybody to talk throughout the chat while I'm going through this, because I don't want it to be just me talking and no one is just, everyone's just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, if you have your share, you have your stories, anything you're comfortable speaking on in the chat with everybody, go ahead and do so. Kenny Klein, what's going on, dude? Appreciate you stopping by. My moderator of the stream, Kenny Klein, is a freaking legend, freaking OG. And I know he's excited for the stream just as much as I am to speak to everybody here today. So um, before we get into that conversation, just some quick stream announcements. Um, I always put stream announcements in my like itinerary, but today will be the stream that we talk about this stuff. Tomorrow, I will see if I'm streaming. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm fine to stream, but it will most likely be a Pokemon Crystal stream tomorrow. Um, for the giveaway that happened this past Wednesday, unfortunately, we have still not heard back from Galagon. I've reached out via Whisper. I did a follow-up message, and we have not um, heard from this user, unfortunately. So what we did on Wednesday was we ended up spinning a second time for a backup winner. So... If by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, Galagon does not respond, um, Mr. Savage Matt 15 will be the winner of the giveaway. So, Galagon, if you're watching this stream, please just know that I've reached out to you on Twitch. If you are in the chat, please go in the chat and just say, hey, I'm here. So that way we can coordinate getting you this gift card. Um, again, it was a $25 gift card for either Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, or for Steam for my PC users out there. Um, but yeah, so Galagon, uh, please reach out to me if you are watching the stream. I do want to make sure you are taken care of with your reward for being a subscriber of the channel. Otherwise, it will be forfeited to Savage Matt 15 who was the runner up in terms of the spin. Um, other stream announcements we got it's pretty much the same stuff uh, at the moment we're kind of just enjoying our our time as affiliate we're slowly getting people into the stream more and more we had a really good turnout on yesterday's stream for our subscriber squads we had a nice four person squad kicking ass on fortnite we didn't get a dub but it was just nothing but good vibes nothing but laughter we were just it was just hilarious that time so if you were in the chat yesterday you saw how funny it was and like thank you guys for always uh coming through and showing love so like being a subscriber is one of those benefits you get to play we get to play online together and just uh have a good time there's nothing but good vibes in this chat i don't like to play around with negativity it's like good vibes or go home you know what i mean 
Havoc, let's freaking go. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's go. Thank you so much for tapping me up. Guys, if you can't watch the stream directly, post up, post up. If you can have me on a Google Chrome tab, make sure to mute the tab, not the stream itself. So that way, uh, Twitch keeps the viewership up and be able to host if possible. So, yo, Havoc, thank you so much for coming through. Let's freaking go. Um, are you streaming today, Havoc? Because I'll, I'll come through and watch you or tab you up if, uh, if I can't watch. Because you're, you're good at Fortnite, so... We gotta play one day also, when we get a chance. Um, in terms of the subscribers of the channel, so pr unfortunately we are getting to the end of the month, August 31st, which is the one month of me being a, a Twitch affiliate. And what that basically means is that everybody who's been gifted a sub um, on August 31st um, will lose their sub, unfortunately, unless they do resubscribe on their own. So um, if you don't resubscribe, Totally understand, no problem. Do your thing, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for being a subscriber of the stream as you have been already. If you do decide to resubscribe, there are many different benefits of being a subscriber. One of them is um, subscriber games that I will be playing with more people. So we did yesterday Fortnite. I'm playing, I'm thinking of doing Smash Bros. Arenas, Mario Party games with you guys, just like nothing but fun with you guys. Um, you get that nice little JLD badge next to your name. You get the nice emotes that you're able to use, including my house sway one. So I'll go over my merch really quickly, shortly. Um, and channel points increase very quickly. So the very popular channel point that's been going on right now is the 25 push-up one. So if you have 5,000 channel points, you can make me do 25 push-ups right on the spot. So. Just as a heads up for you guys, as an incentive to come and watch the stream. Obviously, you don't have to be a subscriber to do that, but um, as a subscriber, your points do climb much more faster than it would as a regular follower. Um, giveaways are my next thing. I'm trying to figure out what my next giveaway will be based on like how many people are subscribed by the end, of, by like the middle of this coming September. We do have September coming up as an incentive for people sending gifted subs. They do get 20% off of every gifted sub that you send to the channel. Um, just as like a heads up and it will help grow the stream as well with the full price anyway So for my streamers out there be sure to advertise that to everybody that you know that's uh, following your channel September starts on September 2nd all the way until September 30th um, and Then giveaways like I said, you know, I'm trying to get more giveaways in uh, our $25 gift cards giveaway was definitely a success and we had a good time that night so definitely want to do that again but with more than 25 like i want to give i want to eventually be able to give a hundred dollar gift cards to people that's like the goal at the moment but you know we're not just not right there yet just because we're still growing we're trying to get a community in the just laying down fam coming through so if you know people who are interested in coming through and showing love to the stream let them know about just laying down because we're trying to grow out here and uplift one another as much as possible um all right um giveaway winner um follow my social media so if you're not following me on social media already you'll see on the title there's an exclamation link tree if you type exclamation link tree in the chat you'll get um one link for all my social media accounts you'll get my twitch account my twitch uh instagram account my upliftwear account my just laying down tiktok i gotta add my hover account there too which is the new which is like a twitch tiktok that i highly recommend you guys joining with my uh, promo code laying like just laying down um, so that way you get access to like all my clips there. I'm going to be putting clips there that aren't even on TikTok or Instagram. So make sure you're on there too. Um, and use that code so that way I get the referral. So that way I could continue to keep going, showing you guys content as much as I've been able to already. Um, but yeah, exclamation social or exclamation link tree in the chat will uh, get you all of my information so you can follow me in as many places as possible. Yo, Will in the chat. Yo, shout out to Will real quick. Yo, let's give Will a shout out in the chat. For getting one of my coffee mugs. My Just Laying Down coffee mug. This one right here. If you're following me on Instagram, you'll see that he posted a story on it. Freaking amazing guy. The best quick scoper I've ever seen. And it's better than me back in 2010. When I was doing the intervention on Modern Warfare 2. So everybody everybody who's in the chat, go ahead and shout, um, follow Will on Twitch. I believe you're going to Facebook uh, gaming soon, but definitely those follows count. Want to give him a shout out. Thank you so much for purchasing that mug and helping the stream out as much as possible. So thank you, dude. Um, 
so yeah so like so going into that is my merchandise so if you type exclamation merch in the chat you'll get access to uh if you want to if you're interested in buying my coffee mug which is the uh how emote so if you're a subscriber to the channel you do know about this how emote whenever bullshit happens this place so you pretty much know that uh things are getting wild out here whether it's in fortnite or smash bros some craziness happens um and my hoodie so I from Uplift should be here soon. Yeah, I've been I've been watching it, dude. Um, it's still waiting uh, to be made, and then I'll send you tracking, even though you'll probably have the tracking already. So appreciate you, dude. Um, yeah, the coffee mug is fine. I, when I got it in the mail, I was actually ex I actually looked at it and I was like, wow, this is actually really nice. Like I didn't think the quality of it was gonna be really good. So for those who are big coffee drinkers or just want to put water in there, I have my water in here for my hydrates. Whenever you guys redeem your hydrate channel points, so I just drink it from here. But Yo, this is a good ass mug. Um, and then the Just Laying Down hoodie should be coming to my house soon. So I'll be showing it, showing it off to you guys on uh, Monday or Tuesday. One of those two days for sure. Depending on the time it gets here. So uh, definitely excited to show that off to you guys. So you guys can uh, take a look and see how it looks. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're new to the stream, I know I advertise this stream more heavily than I do my normal gaming streams. But if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that follow button. Definitely helps out with stream growth and exposure on Twitch. We're trying to make a community out here where we're exposed to way more people and we can actually make a difference in this gaming community, not just from like a gaming perspective, but from a mental perspective, helping people out to be the best version of themselves possible. Um, and if you want to be a subscriber, many different ways to be a subscriber. First one is if you want to just click that subscribe button down below next to the star. Um, and pay the normal price um but i do have to, uh do want to let you guys know it september 2nd uh, it starts september so the discount will be 20 percent off of uh your subscription if you do it then so totally fine if you want to wait till then or if you want to just be a follower totally understand no problems guys um another way you can be a subscriber is through uh amazon prime so if you type exclamation prime in the chat you'll get the option to subscribe to my channel with amazon prime now if you don't know amazon owns twitch which means that as an Amazon Prime member, you do get access to subscribe to one streamer per month for free. And you get all the benefits of that streamer's uh, subscriber perks. Uh, with me, you get giveaways, you get the emotes, you get 20% um, off your uplift items if you decide to purchase uplift items. It just keeps going and going. And we're just going to keep going with that because I'm a big on giving back to those who have helped me out as much as possible. And you guys are the reasons I continue to stream because you guys have helped me grow very quickly like i didn't think i'd be affiliate a month ago i thought it would take to the end of the year to get that three average but because of you guys like yesterday we hit a maximum of 13 people in the chat without any raids and i was so i was shocked to be honest so thank you guys for always coming through and showing love because that's what it's all about showing love to one another forgetting the negativity and just uplifting one another as much as possible so with that being said um How's the music in the chat? Is it low, like enough where you can hear it? I'm trying to, I'm trying to determine if I should have the music on at all. I think I'm just gonna turn it off. So like, I think we're gonna just turn it off there, just cause it's like, uh, I don't want it to be repetitive, and it's like, uh, the music's just bothering me while he talks. So. All right. So now for the the main purpose of this stream. So pretty much today we are talking about mental health, and like I said before, mental health is something that has been dear to me for the past few years. And it's before then, it's just something I just never really thought about because of the stigmas out there that uh, mental health have, such as, oh, you're a pussy. Oh, you, you like, don't talk about your feelings. You gotta man up. You gotta just hold it inside. Like, that shit, that shit's whack, bro. Like, dead ass. Um, so we're gonna keep speaking on these, on these uh, topics today. And it's gonna be, I'll say, maybe like a good hour of uh, conversation. So uh, maybe a little less. I, I have a itinerary pretty much set up of things I want to talk about with you guys, but at the same time, you know, I want you guys to be able to talk about your life's life circumstance if you feel comfortable doing so. Of course, I'm not going to force nobody to talk about anything, but uh, pretty much the topics today will involve like anxiety, depression, suicide, and other mental illnesses that do affect a lot of people in this world. So if this is something that does kind of trigger you, I do understand if you do have to back out of the stream, totally get that. Um, 
but those will be the majority of what I speak about today, um, based on uh, today's stream. Um, I do encourage um, engagement in the chat, like I said before. Like, I don't want it to be just me speaking on all of this and like everybody's just like, oh yeah, whatever, You're just laying down, just speaking. I want it to be where whatever you're going through guys, this channel is what I want as your safe space. So like, I want people to interact with one another in the chat. If you want to ask me questions in the chat while I'm talking, feel free to. I just want just clean slate of everything and just straight up good vibes as we go through this conversation. Now, this isn't something I've done in the past. So this is actually my first time talking about this stuff. And a lot of the stuff that I will speak on is stuff that I kind of kept to myself for years in the past. So just keep that in mind as I go through this. This was never rehearsed. This wasn't like, I obviously I made like a checklist of things I will speak on, but I didn't rehearse anything. So when I speak, it will be the first time and it will be genuine. Um, but yeah, feel free to speak about your experience in your mental health and ask me any questions you got or any topics you'd like to know about as we go through this. Because like, you know, this is an open conversation. This isn't just me venting about life and then saying bye, have a good day. Like, I want you guys to be able to get into this conversation, too, because not only do I want myself to be the best version of me possible and like to mentally heal from anything that I might be going through, I want everybody else to come out of this stream and be like, hey, I feel better about this. I feel better that I spoke to somebody and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, to be interactive. And I'll say this first. Usually this is like a kind of like a last thing for people to say, but guys, you're not alone. And if you know somebody that's going through something, just let them know about the channel. I want this place to be a safe space for anybody who's going through stuff that they might not be comfortable talking about with, like, family or friends or so on and so forth. Sometimes even speaking to strangers even helps alleviate that feeling, I feel. So, like, let this be the place. I want it to be the place. Um, but there's also many resources out there for people who do go through mental illness, whether whatever it may be i can't really list them all in one shot um, without being very specific but there are many resources out there that can help you out no matter what you're going through you're never alone there's somebody who might be going through the same thing you are and when we engage in the conversation of mental health the goal is to actually get people comfortable talking to one another about it without being scared of somebody being like oh yeah you'll be fine or like or just being negative about it or trying to basically invalidate your feelings and try to make you feel like you're stupid for not for feeling that particular way that's just a no-no when it comes to mental health so everything i'm going to talk about now is based on my experience and my viewpoints of stuff i've went through in my life and i encourage everybody in the chat to do the same um and just want to interact with everybody as much as possible so this is sort of like an ama also don't feel like because i'm talking you can't ask me a question as soon as you want to ask it go right ahead and do it so first thing i wanted to pretty much do is introduce myself now obviously you know me as just laying down on twitch if you know me personally then you know who I am already. But for those who don't know who I am, my name is Julian Martinez. I am 28 years old. I live in Queens, New York. And my full time, and I pretty much have a full-time job where I work in computers. I fix computers for a living. I help people out with technical stuff for a living, both at work and personal. And it's just something I've enjoyed doing for pretty much a lot of my life. Like, I think like at 13 years old is when I just like when we when my parents got their first iMac and like ever since then I just like was doing it from here like doing computer shit from here on out the PC that I'm using right now I it ended up working on the first try and I was so shocked about it that uh and I built it myself it took like five hours to build install the OS and do everything so pretty much been a tech guy my entire life um you know, I have my degrees from college, um, but even with all that success, 
I do suffer a lot of times from anxiety, um, lack of self-confidence. It doesn't seem like it from the stream. And like from stuff I post like on Facebook and stuff and Instagram, but sometimes I do have problems with self-confidence. Sometimes I feel like even though I'm up above in the pedestal and I'm blessed to have a lot of things that I do in my life, sometimes I just feel like I can do better, even though that's a very toxic way of thinking of things. So like, for example, if I have five people in the chat right now, I will be like, oh, why don't I have 10? Why don't I have 15 or 20? That doesn't happen all the time. But I feel like it happened more when I was trying to go for affiliate. Like when I would go from zero to one viewer, I would get so excited. And it was like, like, oh my God, somebody wants to watch me. However, when it went to two and then back to one, I would be disappointed and I would hate myself after the stream. And it's just not a good way to do things, man. Like. You're, like, I would sit afterwards and be like, oh, I'm never going to be affiliate. I'm never going to make it. And, like, basically making making these ridiculous deadlines of, like, when I think I'm going to do these things. And this isn't even just for, like, making affiliate or streaming. This is just, like, overall. I'd start, like, making ridiculous deadlines. So, like, going back to affiliate. Oh, I'm going to make affiliate next year, a year from now. Dude. Like, maybe three, four weeks after the last time I said that. I think three or two weeks, I made affiliate. And one month later, we're here today, and we got a shit ton of people in the chat. Both this stream and, like, yesterday. Like, that's why I mentioned yesterday's stream was just, like, wow. 13 people without a raid is just wild. So, like, for those of you who have been joining, thank you for coming through and joining as you have already. Um, but, yeah, I feel like I've been dealing with anxiety for the most of, for pretty much most of my life. When it came to stuff like school, getting homework done, getting good grades, um, going into college and like trying to make money, trying to make sure that when I graduate, I get a good job. And like, it's just a lot of things I, like social anxiety. Like for those who may know me, I have terrible anxiety when it comes to being social to the point where sometimes I come off as weird to a lot of people. And like, I am aware of that and 100% okay with that because there's not much I can really do too much about it when it comes to that. But I do get a lot of social anxiety. Like, you may not see it when, like, for those who may have seen me in person and spoke to me in person, it's like, you see me and, like, I'm talking normal with you guys. I'm, like, having a good time. Like, yo, what's going on, dude? Yo, like, yo, can I help you out with that? But the mental preparation that happens behind the scenes in my head is fucked, man. Like... I feel like I have to prepare what I got to say. I, I'm trying not to sound like a weirdo. And if I fuck up, like if I stutter or if I say something off from what I was supposed to tell somebody, I feel like, oh, I'm a fucking idiot for doing that. And that's not the way to think. But it's just the reality of what I've dealt with for most of my life. Whether it's as a kid asking another kid at school for like the, the book that was in the bookshelf whether it's in college, asking somebody, oh, like, how do you do this math problem? Or if it's like even today, trying to reach out to somebody to um, help them out with their computer, for example, especially when we were in offices. Obviously, today is different where a lot of people are working from home, including myself. But so it makes it a little easier for me in terms of like, all I got to do is chat somebody. I don't have to like actually speak to somebody face to face. Or even if it's like on a video call, I just like, try to keep my camera off because I don't want them to look at me like those kind of things so like social anxiety is a big thing for me just because it's I'm a shy dude you not you don't see it on stream but I'm a very shy guy um for those who really really know me that's and mostly only family kind of knows this but I was diagnosed as a kid with selective mutism and for those of you who don't know Selective mutism is when you are literally so socially anxious at, towards people, you will not talk to anybody. And for anybody who may be watching who went to school with me, you that's probably the, why I didn't really speak out loud like that. So for anybody who knew me pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, whatever, 
they always everybody who knows me from elementary school knows me as the kid who didn't talk and you can ask anybody i know including if if you saw the paradigm shift yesterday playing fortnite with me he will say julian was the kid who didn't talk in school that's why not because i was like just weird or some shit i mean i, I consider myself weird sometimes but like it was just, I just couldn't talk. I only spoke to my parents at that point and my grandmother and grandfather, but like, I just never did it. It was uh, hard to do as a kid. Um, but yeah, those are the things like that. A lot of people kind of like don't take for granted is like, oh, he's just being weird. He doesn't want to talk to nobody. It's not that I don't want to talk to nobody. I literally can't. I'm petrified. And, like, that was, like, my life for a lot of, for many, many years. I eventually grew out of it, and, like, as, like, middle school and, like, high school came, then I was more open with people. I don't know if it was because I was scared that, like, people would make fun of me or, like, make, like, just shit on me for being who I am, but once I started opening up, I started to realize no one really cares. It's, like you're more like you're just seen as a regular human being like when you open up you start realizing oh shit maybe i was uh, wrong after all maybe they do see me as like a regular person and they're not like talking shit behind my back you know so like that's like a lot of like what i went through in my life and i'm grateful that that's a lot of like the extent to it like i didn't like i will be the first one to say i've never been through PT ptsd I've never, like, I've never had, like, a tragic kind of, like, thing happen in my life that, like, traumatized me to the point where I went, like, like, went mentally ill, but, you know, I can't say that about everybody else, so, like, I'm blessed to say, like, that's a lot of the, ex the extent of what I deal with is, like, a lot of anxiety, social anxiety, anxiety of, like, thinking everybody is out to get you in a way, if that makes sense to anybody, I feel like, talking to like i don't it's just it's just hard to think of in like many different words but like you just feel like everybody's like turning their back on you and like talking shit and not like talking shit like oh gossip like oh like he, he's weird like literally trying to take you out and like make you not part of like society anymore that's just like how it kind of gets and then like in terms of depression, I do get it. A lot of times it comes down to inconveniences that just happen back to back to back to the point where I feel like that's just going to be happening for the rest of my uh, life. It gets to that extent where I'm like, oh, this is going to happen for the rest of my life. But, you know, that's really not how it's going to be. You just feel like that because is just happening back to back like for like let's say for a week straight oh your your rent is due then your bill is then your next bills are due and then you feel like your finances are fucked up next day your job is like asking you about your project that you haven't even started and then guess what after after work you go back to school for your college, your graduate degree and then you're like holy shit i got um this presentation to do and then when you do the presentation oh guess what you fucked up on it and then the problem comes afterwards because you, in reality, nothing really happened. Like it was our, like, worst to happen was you came unprepared to a presentation. But for me, what happens is I end up hating myself to the point where I start believing everything that I say about myself is legitimately true, even though it's not. I post a lot on Facebook about and it usually, I don't know, like, sometimes it's joking, but, like, subconsciously, sometimes I do feel that way, like, shit about failure. Like, the other day I put on Facebook, oh, I'm a failure, but at least I don't smoke meth. Like, it's a pretty dark joke to, to share. Like, but, you know, sometimes the problem is a lot of people tend to put themselves down way more than they need to. And that's the problem with today's society. And the reason they put themselves down so much is because they're scared to talk about it with other people. They feel like people either won't care, they're going to laugh at them, or they'll start telling other people. And then it just becomes this large rumor that, oh, so-and-so like is 
acting like acting weird or like being depressed and stuff see depression and anxiety have this very bad stigma where depression just means oh you're gonna kill yourself and like you're sad for absolutely no reason when there's be there's people with uh worse conditions in life now people who obviously one thousand percent there are many different people out in this world that have it way freaking worse than i do way worse than most people in this chat will have it in life whether it be because of their living conditions or just tragic stories that they have that they have had to deal with while still being alive to this day and for those who have gone through all that shit and are still alive i salute you you guys are amazing and i hope you guys prosper and get um whatever assistance you may need to lead the best life and the best version of yourself possible and that's kind of like how i started so like that's pretty much me in a nutshell um i know i kind of went off for like maybe 15 minutes about myself but if you guys have any questions about me if that you want to know personally about me i'm basically all ears right now for that because i want you guys to be able to know the most about me obviously you guys kind of know me as just laying down um for my mods uh for my fellow mods that follow Balent that mod for balance's battles you guys know me as jmar obviously you know my full name because we're all friends on facebook but there's way more to me beyond jmar and just laying down and julian like a lot of stuff does happen in my head that i do feel like i can definitely improve on especially like with self-confidence self-love and those kind of things um but i feel like i have gone further than i was the past few years so i'm definitely proud of that oh man uh is it, uh, introduce all right so what i'm going to talk about now is the channel the pretty much my goals with this channel so obviously just laying down is a twitch stream where i play a lot of video games and that's probably the case for 99 90 if not 95 percent of the people who are on twitch creating content now that's nice i play fortnite i play smash bros and if you've ever joined my streams we have a blast it's like freaking awesome when i when i get to interact with you guys and have fun however the other goal of this channel is to bring this awareness of mental health. And this is why I'm starting this, I decided to do this stream today because I want you guys to know like the goals of this channel. Like, I want this to be a place where if you're having a bad day, and this may sound repetitive for my viewers, if you're having a bad day, come to the channel if I'm live and just speak about your day. You had a bad presentation at work. Your boss yelled at you. You got a failing grade on your exam. Like, if that's something that's really bothering you and you need to speak to somebody about it, I want you guys to at least have me as the person to speak to. And it's not even just going to be me. We got a whole followers list of people who follow my channel that are 1,000% down to join and show love and support to you guys. Like, a lot of my friends from, like, college, school, work, work full, like, my full-time job, um, my fellow mods for Balenci's Battles, they're here almost every time that I go live, and they are nothing but the greatest people that I've ever met, so, like, they're the ones that will be there as well on top of myself if you're ever going through bad shit if you're having a great day so like the reverse now when it comes to having a great day let's say you pass your exam you got your promotion you got your job you got you got a raise in your salary but you may not have nobody to speak to about it either because your environment at home is toxic where they don't care enough to celebrate with you and enjoy like your your accomplishment come into this chat Tell me about your day. Tell me how you got that $10,000 raise um, with your job. And guaranteed, I will make sure the whole chat is sp spreading fire emojis in the chat for you. 
for all my subscribers out there that have this fire emoji. And for those who are not followers, I mean subscribers, make sure you do that fire regular fire emoji in the chat. I want it to be where you come here and you talk about everything that may be bothering you, that may have made your life even better. And we're trying to just hype you up so that way you can be the best version of yourself possible. Now, obviously, like, oh, yeah, I, I got, I did this today. It's not that much. Like, like obviously, it's just telling another person about it. But, you know, it might be good for somebody. Like, there's, there might be somebody out there who just doesn't have anybody to speak on it and needs that kind of, um, I don't even know the word to say, like, that kind of uh, support in terms of, like, celebrating that accomplishment. Like, they just want to tell somebody. Like, I know probably most of everybody in the chat has, like, gotten that job that they wanted or, like, made some kind of money that they, uh, or won the lottery or something. Not Nah, nobody really won the lottery. If you won the lottery, let me know. <laughs> but uh, I know for a fact you've at least wanted to tell one person, whether it be your mom, your dad, your significant other, your sibling, cousin, whatever, or friend, best friend. You've wanted to tell them something. You wanted to tell them about it, but you can't, either because they're not there or they bring off a negative toxic vibe where... They're either going to downplay it and be like, oh, like, why? Or, like, just be like, just basically making it feel like you didn't do anything great. Like, that's just not the way I like to run things here. If you've made some kind of accomplishment in life, spread it in. I will definitely congratulate you. I will make sure the whole chat congratulates you and just makes you feel like you just climbed Mount Everest. We will hype you up here. And that's what I want from everybody that views my channel. Not just to like be like, yo, what's up, just laying down. Like, I want everybody to be like, yo, how's everybody's day going? Yo, uh, like, you go on any vacations? How was your weekend? Like, a lot of people go, like, with August being on the ending now, like, a lot of people did go on vacation. People want to talk about how it went. Um, so, like, basically with that, that's like my main goal with, uh, the channel just to bring an overall positive vibe to the the chat where we're not only hyping up the stream and making hype trains gifting subs and sending bits and all that stuff but we're making sure that our fellow viewers are okay because it is not it is okay to not be okay and like i've heard this phrase many different times but it should be reiterated that it is okay to not be okay i want everybody to be good while they're in the just laying down channel and if and if one of my viewers sees that somebody else is having a bad time offer offer your support you know i want people to be aware that everybody is here for one another i don't want no negativity in the chat where it's like oh tough luck or like that's just it is what it is or like all oh, people have it worse because that's just like a slap in the face like yes people have it worse in life there's people out there dying um obviously if you're watching the news, like the whole Afghanistan thing is happening and my hearts go out to everybody over there that's uh, dealing with that situation. But just because bad things are happening out in the world doesn't invalidate what's bothering you today. And I want you to understand that for everybody who's watching. Just because there's worse out there doesn't invalidate that you're having a bad day and you need to speak to somebody about it because it's bo it's been bothering you. And when you do speak to somebody about it and they do support you, guess what? You do feel good about it. You feel like, whoo, like I got to speak to somebody about it and they were understanding and um, compliant with it and were just able to help me feel better. Because like, if I could go to bed feeling better about something that was bothering me three hours before, like that's just a win in my book. Um, so... That being said, one of the things I wanted to go over was what mental health means to me. Now, what I want everybody in the chat to do is type out what mental health means to you. And I'll pretty much go over them um, as like I speak on my viewpoints of what mental health is. I want everybody to under, like, kind of give their definition of what mental health is and what it represents to them. But pretty much what mental health means to me is... Making sure you are okay, not only physically, 
but mentally. Where you're in a state that nothing around you can bother you, and life is just positive and happy for you. Where you feel like you can conquer the world without thinking of any kind of thoughts that will stop that task from happening and will bring you down. Mental health to me is allowing myself to be vulnerable and allowing myself to speak on things that I may not in the past have liked to speak on and being open about it without the fear of being judged by anyone. And if anyone does judge you, who cares? So that's just what it means to me pretty much. It's just a way of making sure you're okay and, vul and allowing yourself to be vulnerable in that moment. If you're feeling emotional, allowing yourself to be emotional. If you're upset, allowing yourself to be upset or angry without going insane about it. And by insane, I mean going into like anger rage and like getting violent or any kind of like way that could potentially hurt yourself or somebody. If you're sad about something, you know, speaking to somebody about it, it could be anybody that you feel will make you feel better about it rather than just any person just because. Now you could argue, yeah, why am I speaking to just laying down about my feelings? If you feel comfortable speaking on certain things, do it. I will be here 1000%. If you don't feel comfortable speaking to me about on the chat about certain things, if they're too personal, no problem. I 1000% understand. I am not in a position to tell you what you can and cannot speak on in order to get your feelings out. Because there will be, a, hopefully there is at least somebody, even if it's not me, that can uh, help you out with those conversations. So that's what I think of as mental health. And again, feel free to type in what you think of men what you think is mental health to you. I want everybody to be able to uh, get into that and conversate with one another as well. Um, sometimes it's even sometimes it's hard to even explain your feelings. Like you see me like as I've been speaking, like sometimes I've kind of just had to stop and think for a second. Like, like it's just hard to explain your feelings because you've held them in for so long that. You don't know how to explain what you're feeling. I'm a very visual guy. And when I'm thinking of my feelings or how I represent my feelings, I think of it as more of a visual thing rather than as a way of defining it with words. And it's hard for me to explain my feelings a lot of times just because like I, like, I think of things visually when it comes to, like if I'm upset about something I'm actually, when I'm upset about something, I'm thinking about how it could affect the other person. Because in my head, I'm thinking, oh, how would you feel if this happened to you? Or how would you feel if um, you did this to me? So, like, I'm envisioning that in my head. What would be the best plot to make you feel the way I did? But I'm not thinking about the conversation itself of, oh, you hurt me because you went behind my back and told the boss that, I, was a, uh, I wasn't doing my work on time when in reality, these were my due dates and so on and so forth. You know, like just using that as an example, like just like someone going behind your back and telling your boss that like you don't deserve the promotion. Like it's, it's just shady shit. But uh, like more of the story is you don't really know what what's going on, you, how to explain it. And at the same time, there's the stigma of like, you're scared of being judged for it. Like, you think that they're going to either mock you, they're going to make fun of you, they're going to think of you as, like, a bitch. Like, sorry, excuse my language on this, but, like, this is, like, literally stuff that, like, even I think of sometimes, like, when I explain this stuff. But, like, you're just scared that of the repercussions. I would kind of just say it that way rather instead. But... If you're able to express your feelings in a way that can be worded and be able to explain that wording to the next person, that's 
where it will help you out in the long run when it comes to speaking on your feelings whether it's towards other people where it's about certain people certain things certain life situations it's just like that's the goal to be able to explain those things without the fear if we can eliminate the fear then the task becomes the easiest thing to do in the world and that's for a lot of things in life like for skydiving for example i'm scared shitless to do skydiving why are, why are most people scared of skydiving what do you guys think people are scared of skydiving because they're scared that their parachute won't come off they're scared that it'll come off and then they splat and they're dead now this isn't probably the best example of that but what if you could remove that fear what if the parachute not deploying was never a fear in the first place and you knew 100% for a fact that you'd be fine after skydiving. Would you do it? I would do it if that was never if that was a 100% guarantee that I would survive skydiving, which is never a night there's never a 100% chance of skydiving cuz there are issues with like issues do happen with parachutes. That's not to say it'll happen with everybody. It barely happens, but what about that one person? So if you can remove the fear, the actual task of skydiving becomes easy to do. And you never get and you'll you'll probably do it like you'll land in the grass and be like, yo, let's do it again. You'll want to do it over and over again. <laughs> so it kind of goes into this too. If you're scared of speaking on things that may be bothering you or bo or like affecting you in life, if you remove that fear. You'll go on and on about it, and you'll feel better about it inside because you'll feel like you can speak on those things. But however, it is a two-way street where if the person you're talking to is understanding and compassionate about it, it will 1,000% help you out. If it's somebody who's going to be negative Nancy all the time and try to just make you feel like, oh, you're being overdramatic, you're being a drama queen, you're, you're being stupid... Those are the people you want to stay away from. And they may come in the form as your friends. They may come in the form as your family. But those are the people you don't want around you when it comes to uh, explaining your mental health to people. Those aren't healthy people to speak on those things about. You want to make sure you're speaking to people who understand what you're... They don't even have to understand what you're going through or have to know what you're going through. But just being a person to listen is the best way to go about it. The fear of unknown keeps a lot of people... Exactly. That's 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 the end game of what I was trying to get at. Thank you so much. Um, it's just uh, like skydiving, speaking on your mental health, um, even going into a new career. Like with new... With like some... Let's say I want to quit IT and I want to go to real estate. I want to start selling houses and flipping properties. But I'm scared about my paycheck. What if I don't make enough money? What if I don't make any money at all? How am I going to feed, like, the household? How am I going to pay rent? How am I going to buy food? You know what I mean? Like, those fears are what stop us from doing things. And a lot of times, what people do is they do they just risk it anyway. And they just say, hey, if it works, it works. It doesn't, it doesn't. If it doesn't work, then you kind of have to have that mental preparation to say, hey, we'll, we'll bounce back from this and um, have the confidence to do so. If you have the positive mindset, then that's what it is. If you have the negative mindset, you're going to automatically think, Oh my God, I'm basically done. I'm going to be, I'm scared to be homeless. I'm scared to do that and that. And like, that is a common thing for a lot of people. So it would be nice if the fear of a lot of things were eliminated from life because the human race would become more successful as it is, but there's too many blockers in the way unfortunately so we do what we can to do those kind of things um with that being said there are two there are two phrases and you've probably heard me say them a few t a few times that bother the hell out of me the first one is just stop thinking about it now if you've ever been through some kind of stressful task if it's as simple as oh you have your presentation tomorrow or it's something like oh you're grieving uh a person who passed away or if it's something where 
you're anxious about a fight that's happening like somebody like wanted to fight you or something which is probably more common like schools rather than in real life but um you guys may have heard the phrase just stop thinking about it i fucking hate it it is stupid it make it invalidates your feelings towards a particular subject and it just like it's like a slap in the face because saying that makes you feel like it, it's as if you're saying oh you didn't think about doing that like no shit oh shit do i just gotta stop thinking about it oh i'm cured oh my god i'm good i just gotta stop thinking about it and then i don't and my depression's cured like no bro that's not how it works just stop thinking about it just is a stupid phrase i personally think it's stupid because even like even though throughout the day you you may just do that you may just stop thinking about it but the reason you're not thinking about it is because you're distracted by something else whether it be just like the normal day work you're eating dinner you're hanging out with your friends whatever great you think that you're cured when you get to bed at night when you're going to bed guess what thoughts are going to be on you while you're laying your head on your pillow whatever is stressing you out whatever is causing you to feel either depressed anxious sad upset angry those things are what's going to be on your mind so all of that not thinking about it throughout the day kind of just like gets thrown out the window the only benefit of that is less time stress but you're still stressed at the end of the day and that's why i hate this phrase just stop thinking about it undermines your ability to do that obviously if i could stop thinking about certain things if i could get brain surgery where i could remove physical memories from my mind i would have done it years ago but i didn't you know why because that's not possible yo what's good nucleus i appreciate you stopping by dude nah you good man whether you guys are on for like five minutes of this stream or like an hour or like the entire stream you guys are freaking awesome like spread the word about the stream i'm trying to get people in here just to like understand like how mental health works and how i feel it can be addressed to a lot of people because it's something that i've gone through in life and just want to make sure i spread that to other people and not just myself because there are a lot of people who go through a lot of bad things that we don't even know about our best friends could be going through some shit that we don't even know about and we've known them for like 10 plus years our family members probably might be going through something that they will never speak on they will take what they're going through to the grave and that is not a good thing like they should be able to speak on those things like you know how they say the truth will set you free it's not that it's a lie but when you speak on those things and you finally get it off your chest you feel much better I actually pulled the stream up a bit ago but adhd oh no all good dude all good no problem um but yeah so the second phrase that I will speak on is man up two simple words man up man up is I like yes it's a stupid phrase but it makes it seem like in order to be a confident strong person you have to basically be somebody who doesn't give a fuck like it basically makes it seem like you have to be masculine in order to be confident and, and a strong person. And that's just not the case. Like, talking about your feelings as a man doesn't make you a bitch. Talking about your feelings as a man doesn't make you any less of a man than the person who has like six inch biceps or is like macho man. And most likely the macho man will have the most mental health issues anyway. They're just scared to speak on those things because of everything I just spoke about earlier. It actually makes you more of a man to be more comfortable to speak on those things publicly than it does to hold it in. Bottling shit up doesn't make bottling shit up doesn't make you more manly. Bottling shit up is not healthy for your head, for your brain. It's not healthy for your body. Your body will definitely feel it. You'll feel more slow. You won't you just lack you'll just end up lacking motivation to do a lot of things. And you're hiding behind the oh I'm fine phrase and it's just not good man it's just not a good way to live man up is man up just needs to go out the window like like i get it there's people who will be like who will like get upset about certain things and like cry about them you know what i mean but 
you can't just tell people, oh, man up, like, stop being a bitch when it comes to certain things, because you don't know what they're going through. Like, God forbid you tell them that or just stop thinking about it, and they feel like they have no way out, that it's too late and they're no longer in this world. Poseidon, thank you so much for the host. I appreciate you very much. Hope you're doing good. I just don't want that to happen. So those two phrases are things that I don't like to say to people. I don't think I've ever said it to people. But for all my viewers out there, if you ever have spoken about this kind of stuff to somebody, I encourage you to just stay away from those phrases. Just stop thinking about it and man up. They're just not good phrases. And they, in, they actually cause more toxicity. I think I said that right. <laughs> Then they do positivity. That actually causes more damage to the person than it does. And you may have good intentions on it, but you just don't know what they're going through. And that's something you just got to take into consideration when speaking to people. Another phrase that I want to go over, and I've said this many times to a lot of people. Yeah, my friend's been going through it for a while. And the other day he called me because he wasn't good and I drove to his house. See, that's the stuff that, like, when you have good friends like that, that are willing to, like, drive over to you and just, like, listen, that's, like, that's a plus, 1,000%. Like, sometimes it's just as simple as a phone call. Like, saying, hey, like, are you okay? Like, do you want to talk about everything that's going on? Was trying to support his dad came in and gave the whole, you know, anything to say about and that's 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 the shit that I hate. You don't have to like it's this is similar to don't just stop thinking about it. You don't have to anything to be sad about. Like we get it. There's worse people out there, but that doesn't invalidate what you're feeling right now. So like shout out to Nucleus, you know, you you are a good friend who for sure definitely wants to make sure your friend is okay. And, like, I encourage everybody to be that way towards each other. Like, obviously, if there's distance uh, issues, of course, like, if you're obviously across the world, obviously, can't happen. But, like, if you know the person, like, close by, it's close by or somebody you can travel to, like, and you know you can help them out, I encourage you guys to do it. Because these things are, like, these things are serious, man. And... You don't want to wake up one day and then the person you thought was okay is no longer with us in this world. And, like, that is that is a tragic thing to have to deal with, unfortunately. And it has happened to a lot of people. My friend was trying to support him. It's really frustrating. Yeah, it's hard to get that mentality. It's hard. And, like, the sooner we can get that mentality out of people, and usually it's from people who... Don't like unfortunately a lot of people who go through who have that mindset of just like stop thinking about it or you don't have to be sad about they dealt with that in their childhood and that shit was instilled in their head from their parents and then that generation from before and before and before like that's just how their lifestyle was so that's all they know to give to their children but we live in we live in a different society now we live in a different time where it's become way more okay to talk about these things and like that's what i want to do that's what a lot of people on i know there's a lot of twitch streamers out there that are doing the same exact thing that i'm doing right now obviously on a more bigger scale with more followers and stuff but like like if we could get everybody to do that this world would be a much better place not only that but also just like educating everybody on what mental health is and like teach just education overall like i feel like is the key to success for a lot of things like, if people understood and were willing to... So, there's a difference between understanding and willing to understand. So, you can understand the logic of a particular situation and not care. You'll still want to think about what you want to think about. The willingness to understand is when you're open to understanding what they think or what the situation is and being compassionate about it and thinking about it. And, like, that's where... Pro progression comes through it would be more unity in this world 1000% the one thing the one thing that helps people become educated is traveling the world and I think that is 1000% accurate if you travel if a lot of people in this world who are 
very hard-headed, traveled the world, understood a lot of people's cultures, and just listened, understood everything that like is about their culture, their life, and what they go through. This world would be way more understanding and there would be more compassion in this world, 1,000%. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We live in a world where everything is so, oh, pride, like, pride in ones where where everybody comes from that they're so hard-headed to understand what everybody else goes through. Like, there's nothing wrong with being proud of your country. There's nothing wrong with being proud of your culture. But know that there are other cultures out there. And if you educate yourself more on those things, this world will be much better. But sorry to deter from the, the topic at hand. Um, that's just like a... I just feel like traveling the world and understanding other people's cultures is a, not a necessity, but something that will want, like definitely help people understand where people's situations are in life. It will bring more compassion in this world. So, my experience with mental health in the past few years. So, I kind of spoke mostly about this during my introduction, but for those who have joined in shortly, um, pretty much I've dealt with mental health for the past few years. Um, however, like I've had anxiety for as long as I could think of. I've suffered with select mutism where I literally don't talk. I, like as a kid, I literally didn't talk to anybody, not because I couldn't talk, but because it was so bad of a social anxiety that I only spoke to my parents and my grandparents at the time and my sibling, my sister. And eventually I got through it. Like eventually I just kind of gained the courage, but you can't put a number on like how long it takes for that to come through. And it's just something where a lot of people go through shit that we don't know about. Like I know I've said that like 50,000 times already on stream, but like, I feel like a lot of people need to know about that. Like, that was me when I was young too. Exactly, man. Like, we don't even, like, if we, if everybody took the time to speak to their friend and say, hey, what have you gone through throughout your life? Like, is there something that you could tell me that would make you feel better about yourself? Like, that you've held in for years? Like, obviously, it's up to you to control it. Like, what you want to say and when you're ready to say it. But I guarantee you at least some people will be open to telling you about their past experiences whether it's tragic experiences great accomplishments that they've gone through stuff that they've overcome that was once a struggling matter for them like that could definitely help out um yeah what's going on oh yeah you're part of the Poseidon you're part of the nucleus fam I believe in the GR fam right I think uh so everybody here knows each other um it's like so like the past few years have been like the more the past few years have been the reason I've started everything that I've started in terms of mental health. Like back in like I say 2015, 2016 is when I started like actually working. I was done with college, undergrad, but like I just had so much bad social anxiety that I didn't really talk to people. And I kind of had to snap myself out of it because like it made me like like, I don't really care anymore what, like, people are saying about me at this point, but, like, a lot of people were, uh, I guess I was seen as the socially awkward guy, and I was okay with it because that's kind of, like, what it is, but it's just, like, kind of sucks in a way because you're seen as that, and you kind of start thinking in your head, like, oh, they're treating you special because of it, even though... All that it really is is you're not you're scared to talk to them because you don't know what they're gonna say when they when you go up to them. Do you think they're gonna think you're a weirdo? Do you think that they're gonna open you up with open arms? You know those things go into your head. So like, but the thing about social anxiety is if the second someone feels comfortable, like usually, I can't speak on everybody, but usually most people with social anxiety are introverts like myself. I won't speak to you unless you come up to me and start speaking. Then I will feel very comfortable talking to you. And that's just how it's always been for me. It's hard for me to go up to somebody voluntarily and like just start talking to them. If somebody comes up to me, obviously, then I will talk. 
no problem. And that's not like, oh, just like simple, like, oh, yeah, 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 and then walk away. Like, I will, I will open up to you if you come up to me and talk. And it doesn't seem like that from, like, my personality, like, on stream and, like, from people who know me from, like, Facebook and stuff. But that's just how it's been for me. Like, and, like, during that time, I felt like that's when I was at the height of my social anxiety. And, like, I had to, like, snap out of it to the point where I had to, like, start actually going out and not going out, but, like, not being afraid to talk to people in a way like taking the initiative to talk to people first obviously when it comes to work like i said before i work in it and my last job before my current one was in an office so like obviously i'd go up to people go up to people's desks help them out with their computers and stuff but uh like if i didn't know who they were i'll be i'll be scared shitless trying to figure out where the hell they were because like it was like an open office space and like trying to figure out where they were and then just talking to them overall like i like obviously it was it was forced in a way so like i know i can like like i force myself to speak to them but like if i was just going it was, if i was just walk around the office and i wanted to go say hey to somebody i was not going to do it unless they went up to me and said yo what's good julian like that was just how it was for me and then i guess like i don't know if it was just life itself but like i started like gaining weight throughout like 2017 2018 i feel like a lot of that was from this free seamless so if anybody from yex is watching shout out to the free seamless i miss that shit so much <laughs> we got seamless every single day guys 17 dollars twice a day to use to get free food so i kind of get it on that but there's no excuse i could have went healthy but i guess i was just so into the comfort food that like i gained like 20 30 pounds and I was at the worst I felt in terms of weight and, like, feeling to the point where, like, people started noticing. And at that point, I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Let me, uh, my next New Year's resolution in 2019, I'm going to start losing weight. And the good thing about it was I did lose the weight. I lost, like, 25, 30 pounds. I lost pretty much lost all of it plus extra. I was basically down from 180 down to 155. And I don't have a before and after, but, yo, you could see that. I was a fucking stick after that. But the problem with that is, like, I felt good. I felt good about myself for doing that. I was accomplished. I was happy. I had a flat stomach, and I, I had the, I was able to fit into clothes that I hadn't been able to fit into, like, for a few years. So I was, like, really excited about that. But my my takeaway from this would be, don't do something because other people are talking about it. Do something because you yourself want want it to be done. Now, obviously, you can influence yourself into thinking that that's what you want. But at the end of the day, the root cause of it was somebody else or something else influencing that decision. And that's just not the way to go about it. I should have been able to say, hey, on my own, I think I want to lose weight. And just go through with it. Whether or not I go through with it is doesn't matter. However, I let the influence of people seeing that weight gain influence that decision. So I, basically, I only did it because they mentioned it. And that's not the way to do things. Because even though, yeah, I was accomplished, it didn't help out my mental health. It just accomplished a goal that somebody else bought up. That's it. That's all it did. It didn't make me feel good about myself to the extent where, like, I was comfortable in my own skin. Because, at the end of the day, being happy with yourself... So, let's, like, let's take weight for an example. You should be able to be happy in your own skin whether you are 150 pounds, 250 pounds, 400 pounds... Or anything in between. Or even 100 pounds. That should... If you're comfortable in your own skin, you're happy with yourself no matter what the weight is, fuck what everybody says. It doesn't matter what they say. If you're happy in your skin, fuck them. And again, excuse my language, I do tend to curse a lot, so I'm trying to like hold it in a lot in terms of cursing just for the stream. But uh, it does come out sometimes. Um... 
doing good it's all the title appreciate you dude yeah man i'm trying to get more of a and like i don't want this to be the only mental health stream like i do want to have like uh especially when i get more followers and subscribers into the channel i do want this to become more of a like get some amas in here get some people like interacting with one another sharing about like their situations like i know nucleus spoke about talk, going to drive over to his friend's house that takes balls man like some pe like some friends would have just been like oh yeah you'll be all right and then like just good night you know like nucleus went above and beyond to like make sure his friend was boy it was good um yo i appreciate that dude let's go that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to not only bless the community in terms of like helping people out with like interacting with one another and like you know helping people out bits supporting each other's streams but you know i'm trying to make sure people are okay because there's a lot of twitch streamers out there that i'm sure that after they turn off their camera and their streams are offline they walk over to a very toxic negative environment that just makes them wish that they didn't exist anymore and like this is the channel where i want that to go i only got two in-person friends and i keep my phone on them at all times they're hours away but if they need me i'll drop anything to get them yo you're a good friend man like shout out to nucleus everybody just like away from this stream go ahead and follow nucleus 2000 if you're not doing so already he's a he started stream. I forgot when you started streaming, but like you hit affiliate very quickly because you had a nice following, and like nothing but good vibes in this chat. He's either playing marbles, um, Fortnite, and I forgot what else. It was there was some, there was the, whatever the game was you were playing yesterday, which looked really good. I think it was Apex. But everybody, sh everybody, follow Nucleus if you can. Start end of July, Split Gate as well. Split Gate. There you go. That was the game. That's actually a good game. I've been watching a lot of people play. I might just download it. Unless it's like, you gotta pay for it, so. I'll see you after the stream. Maybe I might play it for you guys. Um, Alright. Um, so that's pretty much my experience with mental health. So, like, in 2019, um, I did that. I basically lost all the weight that I lost from the past two years beforehand. And, you know, I thought I was good. Um, then 2020 hit. So, obviously, everybody knows who 2020 is at this point. If you don't know what 2020 happened, what happened in 2020, you guys are under a freaking rock. So, basically, the pandemic hit in 2020. Before that, before 2020, I, so, like, the year before, so, 2019 was the year where my goal was to lose weight. 2020, the, 2020's goal was to work on my mental health. And the reason for that was because in 2019, I realized, yo, I I really am going through some shit right now. I do, like, there's something that can be done with my anxiety and like my random swings of depression. And I think I need to self-improve and self-heal. And I started doing a lot of stuff in terms of reciting things to myself, making my, like speaking to myself positively. Like, that's very s simple, but it can go a long way if you're saying it to yourself every day. Besides, yeah, COVID is no joke, dude. So for everybody who had COVID that is still alive out there, I, su I like salute to you guys for being strong and um, getting through that terrible sickness. For those of you who may have lost somebody to COVID, my condolences, and I really hope that, like, you can come to this channel and, like, feel like you can come to me for anything that you may be thinking about regarding that because again this is a channel of supporting one another not just like watching me play a game and just say oh yeah he got wrecked you know that was the sickest i've ever felt and nearly killed my dad and that's the thing like a lot of older folks will get it too and like you never knew what they if they were going to survive my mom had it but she was it was like a she didn't really get too sick. It was more of like the taste and uh, smell that um, she had the sickness of. But she had it. My grandfather had it, unfortunately. But um, he's no longer with us. God rest his soul. Um, but uh, it's not anything to play around with about. And for those of you who may think it's like a hoax or some shit, I don't know what to tell you guys. And I, and I say that in the most positive way possible. I don't know what to tell you guys, but it is... Uh, something that is real it doesn't matter whether like the conspiracy theories are right if it's man-made or if it was just something that happened with a bat 
in China or something like that. It doesn't matter. The fact that it's here, like, doesn't disregard the fact that it's been affecting millions of people throughout the world. So, appreciate that, man. Uh, but... Yeah, even before COVID happened. So COVID started happening in March in terms of like the whole lockdown and everything. January and February, I started doing a whole bunch of things. So I started re- like, and I, and I highly recommend you guys do these things also because it definitely helps out when it comes to those things. Um, actually, no, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll speak on it a little bit more later. Um, I have a section on how to treat your mental health, uh, like how, how to help yourself out with those things. So I'll speak on those t- later, but Pretty much, long story short, uh, was help was watching a lot of videos on positivity, wa- listening to podcasts on Spotify, writing down like things um, that I was feeling, and um, just every day saying the same thing over and over again. And you know what? I might actually still have it. Let me pull up on Google Keep, and I'll and I'll I'll tell you guys what I would say every single day because I still have it in my notes. Yo, what's good, Gary? I appreciate you stopping by, dude. Let's freaking go, man. Garrett the Gardener. Um, all right. So this is so I actually have now what I would say every single day, and this happened from January till March of 2020. The reason I stopped at March was because of the whole COVID situation, and I kind of and I kind of just dropped the ball and stopped doing it. I could have kept doing it, but I just didn't. But basically, I basically would look in the mirror and say this to myself every single day before I would go home, go to work, um, before I would go walk to the train. Julian, I love you. You are special and you have purpose. You are an amazing person and you mean something to somebody. You have a great life and you've done so much to make it where you are today. You are talented, confident, and have made yourself very successful in life. You should be very proud of your accomplishments. You are loved by your family and by the love of your life. Be selfish today. No one's going to stop you from having a good and productive day. You're going to kill it at everything you do. Make today a better day than yesterday ever was. And that's on one of my t-shirts too. And that it all starts with you. It's rehab time. Let's get it. Now, if, you see my, if you've been looking at my shirt, it says know your worth. One of the main guys I would listen to on my way to work and watch his videos was Trent Sheldon. And I'll put that in the chat for you guys because I want you guys to listen to him. If you guys know who Trent Sheldon is, Trent Sheldon is a motivational speaker who makes videos every single day, makes podcasts on just positivity, working on yourself, and just making sure you can be the best version of yourself possible. He's literally like almost the reason I started Uplift because of that guy. I would listen to his videos every single day and just nothing, it would just make my day feel better before I would go to work. So follow him on Instagram, follow him on Facebook. Listen, watch his videos, man. He's he's a good guy, and unfortunately, he went through sh- um, a lot of stuff these past few, like I think, the past six months. I know his mother passed away, his grandmother passed away, and like the fact that he's still driving and doing all this shit despite those two losses, that shit is strong, man, and like definitely motivates me to want to do the same, no matter what I'm going through in the day or the week or the month, and like. Those are people that I listen to. Like, he's the main one I would listen to regarding uh, being a better version of myself. So, that being said, I'm going to move on to my next section. And again, guys, feel free to talk about your uh, feelings here. Like, if you're going through something, if you know, like, something that a friend may be going through, or if you know somebody that wants to join the stream and, like, come and communicate, like, let them know, man. We, we're trying to have some good vibes in here and just, like, Make sure everybody knows that, like, we're, we're all here for you. That's, like, the whole goal of this. Not only just the stream, but, like, the the whole channel, man. And, like, just me as a person. Just want to always give back to those. Because, like, you never know, man. It could One day you might be with somebody, and the next day they're gone. And if there was something that you... And then you're going to start questioning yourself of, oh, what could I have done better? Guaranteed. So, going into 2020, and I guess it will continue with this timeline... One of the things that I've always wanted to do was start a clothing brand. I'm a big Supreme guy. I would, like, for a few years, I would buy a lot of Supreme shit. I still have a lot of Supreme shit. Um, you would consider me a big hype beast. 
For example, I have this freaking water bottle. Why do I have a water bottle that's a supreme that says Supreme on it? I don't know if you could see it from the lighting, but I'm, I was a big Supreme guy for the longest. I had Supreme literally everything, and I just like clothes overall. I just like having stuff that uh, would make me feel good, and like just being able to rock nice outfits and so on and so forth. However, I didn't know what kind of brand to do. I didn't want to be just a basic ass brand that kind of just fit in with Aeropostale, American Eagle, Hollister, Express, etc. Because what's the point? What's the message that they're trying to do besides, oh, you'll look good in this outfit? So when I decided to do this mental health um, goal of making it myself a better version of myself, I decided, you know what? Let's add mental health into the clothing. So after like a month of trying to figure out names and shirt designs and just doing a lot of shit behind the scenes, I decided to make Uplift Wear. Now, Uplift Wear, if you guys don't know, is my clothing brand that I fully own. And basically, it's it was made to open up the conversation of mental health through our clothing and allow people to be more comfortable in their skin to speak on those things and whatever they're going through. 10% of all of my sales go towards mental health organizations throughout the United States. Um, and that's do all sales no matter what. So whenever someone buys something, even if you use a discount code or like got it for ch dirt cheap, 10% of that still goes towards it no matter how much it is. I think I, let me actually pull it up. I, I think I want to show you guys how much I've donated. It's not a high amount. That's for sure, because, you know, it's still a small shop. It's not anything that's, like, out in the public eye yet, like, on banners and shit. But, uh, basically, Upliftwear was my ticket to making sure not only did I make a clothing brand that I wanted to make and take ownership of, but also something that somebody could wear and be happy with themselves with. So... I want to read off the companies that I've donated to already through a plugin in Shopify. But uh yeah, it's not that much. So so far in the past year I've donated $188. Now, that's not a lot. Obviously there's people who do like thousands of dollars St. Jude and like all these different organizations, but the $188 is from 10% of all sales that I've made total of uplift wear a lot of people who have bought from uplift wear have been like family friends and like just people i sort of know or like i share on facebook you know what i mean but i want to go farther than that i want people who come into the stream to know about it obviously the instagram's down below if you want to take a look at some of my clothing there um there will also be the website you can also type exclamation uplift in the chat and you'll get the direct link to my uh website to check out the clothing um, but yeah, basically I started up with, with that intent to make sure every, like people know they're not alone and I'm going to read real quick the about section of uplift Wear, and I'll share my screen with you guys just so you guys can see it as well. Okay. Let me switch this up. About uplift. Put this. So uplift wears a clothing brand that people can wear as a reminder to be their best self and be positive no matter what is going on in their lives. And that's basically the the one liner of what I summarize as uplift wear. Mental health and self love has been emerging topics in the past few years with the idea that we need to stop telling people to stop thinking about it. Again, one of those phrases that I hate to say or get over it when dealing with life situations. Too many people have been bullied, pushed around, and just put down for a majority of their lives for no reason whatsoever. Bullying is a huge fucking problem in this world, especially in elementary school, middle school, and high school. It's fucking stupid. Like, that shit needs to stop, man. It's not cool anymore. It's not cool to be the cool kid that pushes the other kid around with their lunch money or whatever bullshit they have to say. We've lost too many people to suicide, especially children, and... 
lot of those situations could have been avoided just for being kind to one another. And, like, that's, like, it's ridiculous. Why do we have people, kids killing themselves because some other kid was bullying them? Like, come on. This is, the world has to do better. And that's just, and, and like, a lot of this is why. So, like, 10% of sales are donated to nonprofits in the United States. Um, and I will show you guys which organizations I donate to. But some of them do include the, the Trevor Project, which is for um, LGBTQ youth, the Jed Foundation, Black Mental Health Alliance, and Mental Health America. There's a few others, but those are the main ones that I do go towards. Um you can either, when you do buy from my website, you do get to either pick one. You can pick one or it gets split up among all, I believe it's seven organizations, your 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 sale. And then I donate the, the 10% from the payout that I get. Um, and basically the message is pretty broad. Just love one another and don't let anything stop you from being the best version of yourself. I want, I want my brand to be worn by everybody and encourage people from all walks of life. Basically my goal is... I want people to be able to wear uplift wear, spot one another, two completely different strangers, and be like, yo, I'm here for you. I see you wearing uplift wear. Please know that I'm here no matter what. And that I love you. That's even just it was just a hug, man. Just a hug to know you're you're there. That's the whole goal. I won't read everything, but that's kind of like what I'm trying to do with this. Like, it's a whole movement that I'm trying to get going with uplift wear. So let me go back to but uh yeah if anybody's interested in uplift wear type exclamation uplift in the chat all together and you'll get the link to my website and you'll get to take a look at all the merchandise there's some good stuff there we got some shirts shorts sweats hats um accessories etc for all occasions uh, we even got jackets too we got book bags, all that good stuff. So basically, Uplift Wear was made with that intent. I try to keep it separate from the channel in terms of merchandise, but the whole point of the channel is to bring um, mental health awareness just the same as my clothing brand. So that is more of that's and that's why I kind of promote it a lot of times on the stream anyway, up at, at uplift.wear. If you want to follow me on Instagram. I've been more active on it more. Uh, what I do on the Instagram is I do post um, quotes every day. I do post quotes uh, as well as um, pics of my products as well. So I try to keep it like not just like, oh, yo, buy my shit, buy my shit. I try to also like put some motivation in there for you, for all of my followers on the Instagram. So that way they can take on the day um, in the best way possible. Because some people just need that jump start of like, Making like, yo, you can do this today, and that's what it's all about. Oh man, uh, crying your feelings out. So crying your feelings out has been a topic where it's been more acceptable for women to cry than it has for men, and that shit needs to stop because it's so stupid. Basically, crying your feelings out as a man makes it seem like you're a wussy. You're acting like a girl. You're acting like a bitch. Why are you crying? There's nothing to cry about. Or I'll give you something to cry about is another phrase. As a parent, if you say, I'll give you something to cry about, reevaluate how you're raising your kids. Please. Because it's just not the way to go. It just like if, it just invalidates their feelings of like why they're upset. Obviously, as a kid, you're probably crying about like your video game or you got grounded or something compared to like an actual life situation. Like finances and stuff but it that doesn't matter um crying your feelings out is something that needs to be opened up more towards men just because it's seen as less manly and not masculine en enough to do so it's just not cool it's just not cool to say that and i'll take me as an example the last time i cried before this year was when i was 13 years old and that was a dangerous thing, and it is a dangerous thing. Because of the fact that I forgot how to cry from 13 years old to 28 years old. 27 years old is when it happened. And 
your body actually forgets how to do it to the point where you're you want to so bad what whatever situation you're going through that but it can't because it doesn't know what to do so you kind of have to like force force it out to the point where it looks like crocodile tears or or it looks like you're just overreacting to the point and the reason i the reason i cried after was it 15 probably 15 14 15 years was because my grandfather passed away that shit hurt me really bad and like it was even hard to do that because i just forgot how to do it like i had to, basically what i had to do was basically think of all the bad situation all the bad stuff that was happening in that moment with him the passing how everybody was taking it and just overall just any other stuff that may make me feel upset and just breathe until the tears just finally came out and I don't want anybody else to have to ever go through that. Like, I wish nobody ever had to cry ever again with, like, any, like, bad situations. But it's not healthy to hold in your tears. And if you hold in your tears, it just, it just fucks you up worse than how you're feeling now. Don't ever think that become, that being a man means that you don't cry and that you're macho. Being a man means being able to express those feelings without giving a fuck nobody, what anybody says. And that's what it's all about. And I feel like if more people were on board with that, the world would be a better place in terms of setting up the building blocks of starting the conversation of mental health towards others and allowing people to come to you when they want to express their feelings towards you. So crying your feelings out, I feel, is very important. If you don't feel otherwise, please... I encourage you to come here and explain why. Yes, you don't have to cry over every single thing that happens in your life. However, don't be afraid to if you feel like that's what you have to do. If you have to, do it. Who cares? Who gives a fuck? And sorry again for my language. So that was just like a little thing. Crying your feelings out is something. Um, so now, feel free again, guys. Feel free to interact in the chat. Don't just like stay here. Don't just like be like oh julian's talking so i can't really talk i'm gonna distract them like distract me i want you guys to distract me distract me with your stories distract me with like stuff you feel about like what i'm talking about if i'm wrong tell me i'm wrong if you have experiences about the opposite of what i'm saying tell me like i want to hear what you guys have to say the only way for us to get together is to interact with one another and i want people to feel comfortable doing so so feel free to distract me if you want to um totally fine just don't give me 25 push-ups in the middle of the stream Kenny Haley um so one of the so one of the fewest last things that I wanted to talk about is how to treat your mental health so obviously I've spoken about a lot of the things that I feel are wrong in this world and that's just how the world is there's always going to be negativity in the world that will affect us in one way or another but how can you combat it how can you deal with it? There's no cure for mental health. And I will tell you that 1000%. There is no cure. There is no one single solution, one single injection, antidote, pill. There is no antidepressant that will cure you of, of any of your mental illnesses in one shot. So the only way to really combat it is to be determined with a way to treat it. When I'm upset... I tend to write down my feelings a lot. When I'm angry, I write down what I feel. Even if it sounds stupid, if I sound like, oh, I'm never going to get over this. Oh, I'm going to be upset like this for 20 years. I write that shit down. You know why? It's the same as like when you're angry, like fighting somebody. When you're fighting somebody, you eventually lose all your power. Like, let's think of a boxing match. When you're getting hit nonstop and you're fighting back, you eventually run out of steam. And you just like get tired eventually, and either you're gonna get knocked out, or the game, or the match is over, and like you end up um, not losing, but like you end up with no energy. Is what I'm trying to say. There's it's not really a fact of winner or loser. It's more of you end up losing all of your energy. So I feel like writing down your feelings is a good way to getting a lot of the anger or frustration, sadness, depression out of your system, so that way 
you can reflect on it later on down the line. So like you may write all this stuff down now and it may sound ridiculous, but then 12 hours later, you might look at that and be like, what the fuck was I thinking? It allows you to vent everything you need to that may not make 1000% sense without hurting anybody. And then you can reflect back to it and say, hey, maybe I was wrong. And it allows you to give yourself some time to think realistically of what is going on. So it's always been big with me. I highly encourage if you're going through something, write write it down. Whether it, like we're in the we're in the smartphone age, if you got an Android, you got the Google Keep app. If you got your iPhone, you got Notes app. If you're on a computer, make a Microsoft Word document. If you're on a laptop, same shit. Write it down. Type it out. Even before you even speak to somebody about it, like writing it down might actually help you out before you even approach somebody and that will make you even feel even better when like even more than what you were going to be if you went in like going in full of rage or whatever feeling because you get adrenaline from like that feeling of like sadness like you you start thinking the end of the world is here and that's just how i've always experienced it like it's over like there's no coming back from this this is your life from here on out Setting micro goals throughout the day and the week. Now, like I said before, I work from home full time. So that's what allows me to stream every day. Because I get to take my lunch break, come stream, and then go back to work. Work does stress me out a lot of times. And it's not just because, you know, projects and shit. It's just like the people around you. It's like yourself. Like You start thinking that, oh, you have to get this work done. Otherwise, you're basically fired and then you're going to get homeless because you can't, don't, can't pay the bills. You're going to be seen as a bum. And I know that's a very large stretch and probably unnecessary. But for a lot of people, people think that way. They start thinking about those things very long term and think that they have to fix shit now in order to get it done. Um, how I help out with any kind of stress I might be feeling with work or life I make a checklist of everything I need to do for the day. If I knock out everything, then I knock out everything and we're all set. If I don't knock out everything, it's okay. Move those checklist boxes to the next day. And obviously, like, you know, with work sometimes, things come out like out of left field or it's a curveball. Add those to the checklist as they come so you can organize it. Set things based on priority. Is this due today? Is this due tomorrow? set the least priority goals like as the last things to do and like work on your most prioritized things if you're somebody with ocd who might care more about less checklist items irrelevant to priority or like impact do the less important things first so that way you can focus on the other things without worrying about those less important things um i'm a very organized like i like to be organized in a lot of things like I wouldn't say I have OCD, but I have, a, like, like I need things to be perfect for certain things. Like, for example, like, you're looking at me through my just chatting camera. With the, if you see a new follower where it says Thin Morty, shout out to Thin Morty for the follow. You see that it's all the way to the left. I've been trying to figure out for the longest how to center it, where no matter who follows next, it's going to stay in the center. I can't figure it out. If somebody knows how to do it, let me know in the chat. But, uh... N- like I just kind of left it there as I started the stream, but I would ideally want it in the middle, um, just to like go on that. But make make goals for yourself. M- Micro check. There's checklist apps out there. Like a lot of people go a lot. Like I'm sure some of you some of you guys are watching the stream through, um, through your smartphones rather than a computer. Most people have more mo- more people have smartphones than they do computers. So if you're watching through a smartphone, there's 1,000% a checklist app for you guys. There's a ta- For Google Android, there's, a, there's the task, Google Tasks. for Or use Google Keep. Google Keep, Keep has a checklist section. Um, for those of you on iPhone, I think there's a checklist app. Or if anything, just go to the, the App Store for one. And use it as your uh, way of keeping track of all the things you have to do for the day. If it's your, like, your house chores or like taking kids to school and like doing that. like Even if it's obvious stuff. Trust me, 
your life will feel like you'll feel much better when you see that all of your checklist items have been crossed off and you only have one thing to do left. It's better than having anxiety and being overwhelmed. Like, oh shit, I gotta do that. Oh, I gotta go get lunch. I gotta get like this project submitted. Oh, I gotta do my expenses. Like when you just keep it in your head, it gets overwhelming. But when you have it written down and in a checklist, you feel like you don't have to have your brain work as much because it's all written there for you. And as a very visual person, it helps wonders. One of the other things I started to do when 2020 hit was meditation. And I stopped doing it. However, that's just out of choice. I just don't do it anymore. However, meditation will help with your breathing. It helps you to clear your mind. It helps you to concentrate. For those of you who have Android, I can give you guys, if you're interested, the link to the app that I use for meditation. Basically, they have meditations as little as two, two minutes and as far as 30 minutes. So for those who want to do some meditation, meditation works wonders when it comes to trying to clear your mind and it helps you take on the day much better because you feel more clear in what you have to accomplish in everything you do for the day, whether it's a daily thing you do or just like a one-off thing. Um, keeping yourself distracted is another one. Keeping yourself distracted. Um, I know a lot of people tend to like to stay home and do stuff and like just watch their Netflix and shit. And that's fine. If that's your happy place, then that's your happy place. Um, a lot of people, however, don't. They end up either feeling lonely or they uh, just don't want to do anything outside of the house. And they end up just dwelling on whatever life is bringing them in terms of stress. Maybe go out some more often. Um, talk to your friends. Maybe make some plans. Go out to dinner. Go out to lunch. Um Go see that new attraction that um, opened up on 34th Street or Times Square, that, that Ferris wheel. I think that Ferris wheel is stupid, but um, if you have the money, go ahead and go on a Ferris wheel. Never be afraid, and this is off topic of what um, I have listed. Never be afraid to go to a restaurant by yourself and sit down in a table for one. That does not make you lonely. It just means you're confident enough to go out on your own and have a good time. Just like something simple like that. I just wanted to get that out there. There's memes out there where it's like people are like, oh, that person's sitting by themselves. They must be mad lonely. They're forever alone. That does not mean you're forever alone. That means you're confident in yourself in a certain way in order to do that. I've eaten by myself um, many times. I travel for work sometimes. So like eating at restaurants uh, by myself um, has happened. And who cares, man? People on their lunch break eat lunch by themselves. They go to their Burger King or McDonald's and just eat their food and then go back to work. Like, what's the big deal, you know? So, never be never be afraid to travel alone, dine alone, dine, D-I-N-E, not die, um, and just do things by yourself because sometimes people just need that lone, Some sometimes people just need to be solo to gather themselves much better, so... Just keep that in mind. Um, keeping fit and healthy. Obviously, guys, like I said before, who can like if you're comfortable in your body, no matter like how fit or uh, how unhealthy you are, if you're happy with yourself and you're confident in life, and just don't let shit happen to you, or don't let drama enter your life. More power to you, and much respect to you. If you feel like you lack motivation. Maybe start doing something to help get fit. Um, not only is your mental health important, but your physical health too. Having physical health makes your mental health more confident. And I'm not even saying just for looks. You'll feel more awake. You can get up more better. Like more, A lot of people get up for work and they're like all sluggish and slow. You'll be able to get up more often, like much easier. You'll be more confident to take out the day, take on the day. You'll be able to walk around more. You'll be able. To, you'll want to do more things that involve getting active and um, doing stuff that'll make yourself um, a better person and more confident in yourself. Because your body is happy. Like not even just your brain. Now your body's happy. And then this is the one thing I always try to get out to people and i'm blessed to say that i have a, like the mod the mods that i work with to stream 
uh, to help with Balenci's battle stream. They're literally a crazy group of friends that I would not trade for the world, man. And I say that because you need to surround yourself with people who are just nothing but positive and want the same goals as you do. You don't want people who are just trying to either make the bare minimum or are trying to bring you down and do shit that will make your life worse in the long run. You want people around you who are going to help support you, who are going to see the same goals as you do, who will want to see you succeed and just bring you up in all ways possible. Stay away from these toxic people that don't cheer you on. If you notice that you made if you made a big accomplishment in this world and your friends are not congratulating you or just like oh cool or are not cheering you on that's a red flag that you need to stay away from them they're jealous they're envious and they want to overtake you quickly in as quickly as possible they want to be able to succeed over you because they wish they were you and i want you to understand that from that quote they wish they were you so they want to take over you and the last thing i will say is therapy now if you can take on something like mental health without it more power to you and much loved and i hope that you get as much uh accomplished as you need to to overcome something in terms of mental health whatever you might be going through however some people do need therapy they've gone through so much in life that they've pretty much given up and don't know how to go through maybe even the stuff that i went through maybe they went through all of the stuff that i just went through and don't know what to do next and therapy is something that I would recommend if you feel like all else has not worked. Now, not every therapist is the same. Some people have complained that their therapist sucked. Some people say that their therapist on the first try was great. However, sometimes it might even take a few therapists before you find the right one that makes you feel comfortable. Not only do you have to uh, be ready to speak on those things but they have to be ready to understand that and basically put themselves in your shoes before talking to you so like i i've thought about therapy and i felt and i feel like i would benefit from going to therapy and i would like to go and i'll be doing research on it a little bit more to figure out like who would be good and all that um some people like in-person therapy some people like remote and luckily we live in a technology world now where a lot of that is available um some people like old school in person where they gotta go you know you sit on that long couch and talk to the person for the hour but now there's uh there's things like um so like i've been getting ads now for better better help so better help is an app from what i understand where you pay a certain amount of month i think it's like two or three hundred a month and you get paired with a with somebody who will who's licensed um i think in the medical like in like psychology or something like that like like literally licensed with the state or whatever and you can text them you can video chat with them there's support groups of other people who are on the app also um that are available 24 7. so like if you're laying at night and like oh like you're having like a panic attack or anxiety attack you can talk to them about it in like, or if something's bothering you, you can go and speak to them on it. And that's what um, technology has gotten us to today. And it's great. You can have phone calls without having to make an appointment. Like, it's good stuff. And we've come a long way with that. And the goal now is just to make sure it's it goes even further. Um, but yeah, I've thought about therapy and I think I want to at least try it out to at least see how it is even if it's just one class one session you know it doesn't hurt to try and see how it is if it's if it helps me out and i feel like a better person after day one great you know recommend the doctor and that's it 
if it's something I want to keep going to and re and repeat, then so on, so be it, you know. But I feel like even though I don't consider myself one thousand percent okay with a lot of things, there are things that I am blessed to say I am happy with. But that doesn't you don't basically you don't have to be like you don't have to be down in the dirt zero percent healthy to get a therapist. You can still be happy, but still feel like that will benefit you even more more love to you if you do that and i feel like even though i'm not like fully like down the dirt depressed i feel like that a lot of times i think it would help and i say all this as a personal experience because i want you guys to be comfortable saying that as well that if you need therapy totally understandable and I will support you on your decision of that. It's the same as if somebody's admitting themselves to rehab. Somebody has an addiction, whether it's drinking, smoking, um, drug addiction. Like, those things are terrible. Like, the same thing with mental health. If you need a therapist or you need to see, see somebody, that is fine and I am proud of you. And I'm actually proud of you. Not just, oh, I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you for being able to do that because a lot of people are scared to do that. They're scared to go through that... Uh, process because they think people are going to consider them crazy or psycho when that's not the case you you really you really want to work on yourself and that's the whole thing with this um going on so i have one less i have one section left and it's basically how you can help others who are dealing with mental health issues rather than yourself how can you help others maybe you don't go through mental health issues maybe you don't have a mental mental illness but you know somebody who does or may think that somebody's going through something or somebody's come up to you with those issues. So how do you deal with that? Actively listen to them. Don't just hear them. Listen to them. Listen to what they're saying. Allow them to explain why they feel that way without invalidating the reason that they're giving it. Even to the point where you don't even interrupt them when they're speaking. Allow them to allow them to tell you when they're ready for you to speak. Because if you distract them while they're speaking, they might lose their train of thought. That happens to me all the time. Not even just for this, just in general. Like I might be even talking about my food. And then I forget about what I was talking about before with Amanda, so listen to them and not just hear them like obviously you can listen to their words and be like oh okay and like i'm here for you man but actually listen to what they're saying because that information might help you out when they're going through some shit if they're having a panic attack an anxiety attack and you're and you bring up something they may have told you before that might actually make them feel better like you know why because they they'll know that you're actually listening to them even if it's just one key thing that they told you that you remember, they will feel like they have a friend that they can speak to on those things. And a lot of times when people are going through these these things, they feel alone. Like, even if they talk to you about what they're going through, that they're you don't care. But if you can actually listen to them and like keep everything they say into consideration when you speak to them about it, you may have just saved a life. That's how crazy it gets with these situations. You may have just saved a life if you listened, if you actually listen to them and listen to what they're saying. And for anybody out there who may have like had suicidal thoughts or like have con have attempted suicide, I want you to know that you're loved and that I hope that if there's no one else that will listen to you, I want to be the one that listens. Not just hearing you, not just listening to you, not just reading your chat, but actually keeping it in my head that you are thought of. Have an open mind and try to understand what they're saying. It might not make sense to you on first glance because you never dealt with it, but just because you never dealt with something before, just because you don't do something a certain way or think a certain way, doesn't mean that everybody else does the same as you. Everybody is different out in this world and everybody has a very different mindset on a lot of things. So just have an open mind and understand what they're saying. Because it may be something easy for you to deal with, 
because that's your that's just your mindset. You just know how to deal with things better than some some others, and that's okay. That doesn't mean you're better than them. It just means you just know how to accomplish it a little easier. Um, just and just be accepting of it. Like don't bring them down because of it. Don't be like, oh, snap out of it, or like don't or look at yourself. You're going crazy. Like those things will can actually hurt somebody. Just have an open mind on that. And with that being said, that's pretty much my conversation with you guys. And, like, I'm actually really happy I had the stream. Because there's a lot of things that you guys may not know I got off of my chest. And I've spoken out current publicly about it right now. And I encourage everybody to feel the same way. If you guys are ever going through anything, please message me. I want to be the voice that listens to you going through, through through some bad times. I may not be able to physically be there with you, but I want to be the guy that can help you out through no matter what. Like, you guys are my viewers. You guys take the time to come and follow me on Twitch, subscribing to my channel, showing love, hosting, and just sharing the word about the channel that it would be stupid to turn my back on you guys for when you were you guys are the ones that helped me grow so please know that if you are have if you know anybody that is contemplating suicide please know there's the suicide hotline suicide national Su i forget what it's called the suicide national prevention national sorry i'm dyslexic too guys national suicide prevention lifeline and I will put it in the chat for anybody who may need it. For anybody who you might know might be contemplating it. Because I don't want to ever have to deal with anybody I know personally dealing with suicide. It's just a terrible thing to even think about. So if like I can prevent that one way or another, that makes my whole life better. Um... Guys, I thank you very much for stopping by and listening to me talk about this. I know I usually just play Smash Bros and talk shit about how I spike somebody with Mario. I know I'm usually just having like conversations with you guys about like Oreos or Chips Ahoy and like how pickles are nasty and all that like yesterday's stream. <laughs> but, you know, mental health is a big thing for me and I appreciate everybody who's been coming through and uh showing love throughout these past streams and thank you so much guys for coming through and showing love on the stream um i will close this with my uh final statements and basically give me one second guys sorry guys Okay, um, I will oh, I will end with my closing statements, and it's basically this. I say this every stream at the end before I uh, raid somebody's channel. And that is to always remember, guys, uplift yourself, make yourself and your priority and your well-being a priority in life, so that way you can be the best version of yourself possible. You can't expect people to make you happy if you're not happy with yourself. So do everything you can to be the best version of yourself possible. With that being said, that is the conclusion to my mental health stream. We will definitely be having more soon. I want to be able to have more soon. But I hope you guys have a great day. Tomorrow we'll be playing some uh, Pokemon. Pokemon Crystal. And yo, holy shit, before I go. Oh god, yo, so for everybody who was in my giveaway, Galagon has finally responded. So Galagon, if you're I don't know if you're watching the stream, but I will uh I will send you I will message back to you and uh we'll work on getting the gift card. I'm happy you responded. Um and thank you for being a subscriber to the channel, man. So happy you finally uh were able to respond and come through. Uh so let's see who we could raid. Uh 
let's raid Princess Buttercup, who was my second most recent raid, I mean, subscriber. Um, I raided Pexter yesterday, so it's only fair to raid her today. So let's, let me pull up her Twitch real quick. This raid. Where you at? Start raid. All right, guys. Have a good one. I will see you tomorrow, and have a great day. See you guys later. Let's wait for that raid to finish off, and then show. Go ahead and show her love. She she's one of the newest subscribers to the channel, so definitely uh, make sure you follow and subscribe if possible. Take care, guys.